Yo guys, what's up? It's Blackjack here, and I'm with Explosive again. This is part two of our NBA breakdown. Season starts October 30th. This is the Western Conference breakdown. We're going to start with the defending Western Conference champions, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, the Thunder, they really didn't do much this offseason, but they were. They are the defending Western Conference champions, and they're favorites by many to, to go back to the finals. Um, Russell Westbrook is a... He's probably only going to get better. Really good young point guard. He does. He's a little trigger happy, but you know, he's a really good player. Um, Durant, one of the top two players in the game. Um, he's arguably the best, but you know, LeBron James after last year, you got to give him his credit. So he's probably the best. But Durant is probably the best pure scorer in the league. Um, Perkins is a big man in the in the middle. Uh, he was better with the Celtics, but still a big body, and he helps the Thunder against the big centers. Ibaka really. Really was a really good player last year. May may have come out of nowhere, but um, you know he played really good for them in the playoffs. Uh, Cephalosha, really just a defensive stopper, but he did help them in the playoffs. He hit some key shots. He's not going to score a lot of points, but he's a good defender. Coming off the bench, James Harden. You know, not there's not a, a better bench player in the league really. Come uh, six man, James Harden. Just I mean, except for the finals where he didn't do anything really, but. Um, during the regular season and during the rest of the playoffs, he would come in to, and just be just like one of the starters. So, um, yeah, yeah there, there's reason to believe that they'll be back in the finals again this year. Lakers are obviously going to be there too. Yeah, I feel like Nick Collison, James Harden, lots of those people, they don't have that much bench depth, but the people that they do have coming in are worth it. So, you know, that makes up for the amount of players. Okay, let's move on to – we're not going to really go to the Spurs yet. We're going to go to the Lakers because they seem to be the second biggest powerhouse in the Western Conference this year. And they got a course to add-ons of Steve Nash, Dwight Howard, and the lesser-known add-ons of Antoine Jameson and Jody Meeks, which is some great off-season moves. I mean, they're the Lakers. They they normally get the players they want. If they want a player, they're going to go out and get them. And they showed that this off-season by getting two big names, Steve Nash and Dwight Howard. And they have Kobe Bryant, of course. And I really feel like this team is going to be much improved from last team. Kobe Bryant's shooting percentage is going to raise up much higher now. He doesn't have to run the offense. It can, he can run it off of Steve Nash. They have Steve Blake, Andrew Goodlock, Devin Ebanks, Jordan Hill. They still got a lot of good bench players. And, you know, I really think that this year they're going to give the Thunder a very good challenge. Probably second best team. First, maybe. Arguable. And... The Princeton offense they're running is going to be interesting to watch the Lakers this year. Yeah, the Lakers made a, a lot of big moves in the offseason. They're really the Yankees of the NBA where they'll just go out and get anybody who they want. Um, doesn't mean it's going to translate to championship this year, but, you know, it's they are really a super team. Uh, Dwight Howard, you know, everybody knows about him. He's a great center, um, best center in the game, and they got him relatively cheap for Andrew Bynum. Um, Kobe Bryant, one of the best players in the league every year, uh, first ballot, first you know Hall of Famer when he retires. Um, the acquisition of Steve Nash was huge. It's going to help uh, get some pressure off of Kobe, really ball handling because you know Nash will have the ball in his hands. Uh, it'll help out Gasol too. Gasol is an alley oop machine a lot, so is Dwight Howard. Um, the Lakers are going to be there. It's, I mean, I think. Just like in the Eastern Conference, where people think it's going to be Celtics and Miami, uh, a lot of people believe it'll be Lakers and Oklahoma City, and they both great teams. I mean, you can't you don't go wrong with you can't go wrong with either those teams right now. Yeah, let's let's move on to a team sort of corresponding with what the Bulls are in the Eastern Conference, the San Antonio Spurs. Now they don't really have much injury problems, but. They do have an age factor. I mean, you could see it last year, the way the Thunder just ran them up and down the court. I mean, you got Ginobili coming off the bench, Parker, Duncan still. And if they're bench players like Splitter, Blair, Danny Green, Stephen Jackson, if they can play at the level they did last year, they're going to be right back there. But I really just think they're getting older, and the bench players are not that significant enough to make up for the age. So... I really see them as like a third place team. Uh, yeah, the Spurs, similar to the Bulls in the Eastern Conference, they are a team that you don't maybe another team you don't want to play in the first round. They're a, a really veteran, smart group. They're not they're not going to overwhelm you with talent, but 
they can outsmart you definitely. They have they have one of the best coaches in the game in Greg Popovich. Um, Tim Duncan is one of the smartest players in the NBA. I mean, you would swear he's 45 years old because he's been playing for so long. Um, but he doesn't rely on being young. He, I mean, he has a very efficient game, very efficient paint game without being, you know, dunking the ball every time. Um, Tony Parker, great point guard. Manu Ginobili, you know, they've they've both proven a lot over their careers. Um, they're older now, so it's going to be tougher for them. But last year they were a good team, and they were in it at the end um, until the second to last round um, of the Western Conference. Um, but you know, sometimes father time never really loses. So yeah, okay. It's, it's tough to pick them against the athletic teams like the Thunder, and even though the Lakers are older, they still have more athletic big men, um, and you know, yeah. a little bit young. Okay, let's let's move on to teams. Um, the Clippers and the Nuggets. Now they have made a lot of good offseason acquisitions, and I really feel like they're there, like they're right on, right outside the door, looking in at the Lakers, Oklahoma City, and Spurs, and like they might, they might make a run. You don't know. So start off with the Clippers. Yeah, the, the Clippers are a very talented team. Uh, Chris Paul. Uh, I mean, e- even the backup is pretty good. Eric Bledsoe, uh, Chauncey Billups, veteran leader. Jamal Crawford is going to be a really good addition for them. Uh, he's instant offense. Blake Griffin, uh, say what you want. He's not he's not the greatest free throw shooter, not the greatest shooter, but it is Lob City in L.A., and he's a big part of it. Um, Lamar Odom coming off the bench. That's a big wild card for them. He was really great as a uh, Laker, really fell off last year. I mean, fell off a cliff, really, with the Mavericks. But um, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. DeAndre Jordan, uh, one Probably one of the biggest rising stars in the NBA. Uh, n- another big part of that lob city. Um, Karan Butler, another really good scorer. The, the Clippers also added Matt Barnes, underrated move. Really good defender. Uh, he can score as well. Uh, they have a solid team. They'll, they'll cause problems for teams in the playoffs. I don't think they're going to be in the Western Conference Finals. Probably not really. I mean, they could make it to the semis, but, you know, they're, they're a talented team. Yeah, they they are more like flashy than talent wise, but I really feel like Grant Hill, Matt Barnes, Mario, and like you're talking about, they really have a good chance of making a decent run in the playoffs. But I really don't feel like right now they can stand up to the veteran leadership of Lakers. And I mean, the Thunder don't really have the veteran leadership as much, but they're just an all-around better team. So let's also talk about the Nuggets. I really feel like they made. Like, Iguodala, that was a great pickup for them. They're already a team that's really coming to their own last year, if, as you saw them against the Lakers in the playoffs. And Iguodala fits right in there, along with Ty Lawson, JaVel McGee, one of the rising centers in the league, Kenneth Fareed, just a beast down low, and Gallinari, who's still got a great shot, backed up by Wilson Chandler. Yeah, Iguodala was really a steal of a trade. I, I mean, they kind of really got away with it because they needed another team in that trade for the Bynum and Howard team to go through, I believe. But, um, yeah, Iguodala, you know, he's a superstar, really. Uh, really good scorer, plays good defense, uh, can jump out of the gym. JaVel McGee is turning into one of the best centers in the game. Uh, Kenneth Fareed, very energetic. Uh, he gets the crowd into it a lot with his big dunks and defensive plays. Gallinari is not really flashy, but he's a good shooter, solid player to have on your team. Ty Lawson's a good player. Uh, they do have a decent bench with uh, Corey Brewer. He can come in and score. Andre Miller is a really good player. Wilson Chandler, he's there. He's good. Um, they're a good team. Uh, they did make some noise last year in the playoffs. Their, their team, like the Clippers, you could probably scare a few teams in the in the playoffs again this year. Um yeah, that's about it. Right, and then we got two sleepers. I'm going to let Explosive talk about Memphis, Gri- Memphis Grizzlies, and I'm going to talk about Dallas. Uh, the Grizzlies, I mean, they were a surprising, really surprising team a couple of years ago. Um, Marc Gasol is maybe, maybe has to pass his brother, Pau Gasol, and he's he's really good center now. Rudy Gay, a uh, really good player out of UConn. Uh, Mike Conley, good point guard. He can score, good passer. Uh, Tony Allen, not a not a great shooter, but he's a very good defender, and he makes a lot of energetic plays that gets the crowd going, gets the team going. 
Zach Randolph is a big bodied power forward that'll get into the paint and score for you. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if they have it in them to do what they did a few years ago, but they uh, they do have a decent squad. They, the loss of Ohio may have hurt them, but yeah, they, they could be a playoff team. Yeah, and then Dallas Mavericks real quick. I mean, they, of course, have Dirk, one of the most, fl- like, I don't know how to even explain it. He's a great shooter. Chris Kamen's going to be a big addition down low for them. They got Marion and Carter still at the small forward position. Darren Collison, which they got from the Pacers, and O.J. Mayo, which they got from Memphis. So it's going to be interesting to see a new front court without Jason Kidd and Jason Terry there for the first time in three to four years. So it'll be really interesting to see Dirk supposedly injured right now, but I feel like he'll be healthy soon. He hasn't really played much physical game, so he'll be back, and there'll be a a decent threat to make the playoffs and possibly surprise a few teams. I'm not sure. So let's talk about the um, Western Conference Finals, which, I mean, we can both probably come to a consensus. It's going to be Oklahoma City versus the Lakers. So I'm going to let Explosive tell you who he thinks is going to win, and then I'll go. Uh, the Lakers did add a lot of players. Like like I said, they, they've improved their team. And in last year's series, even though it was a 4-1, I believe, um, the series was a lot closer than it seemed. They were a lot of one-point games. Or, you know, close games, but um, I I do believe the Thunder are, are still the better team because they are more athletic, and Kevin Durant is really like a younger version of Kobe. Uh, I mean, I think it'll be a six or seven game series in the Western Conference Finals, but I like the Oklahoma City Thunder to go to the finals again, and to play against the Boston Celtics in the finals. In that in that series, I would pick the Celtics in seven. I I see it as, um, you know, Rondo and Westbrook, you know, classic young 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 point guards, you know, going at it. Um, I think it would be fitting for you know Garnett to go off like that with a championship. Pierce too, even though he might not retire this year. But um, yeah, I I see the Celtics winning it this year. I think they did a lot to improve their team this year. I think the Thunder will be there because of their uh, their youth, and they'll give the Celtics all they can handle, but I think the Celtics will pull it off. I feel almost opposite. I feel that the Lakers have, like, the veteran leadership with Kobe. It, it almost feels like Kobe, he's been talking about retirement in two years. Steve Nash, he's getting really high up there in years. Paul Gasol is even aging. They're even talking about middle world peace, getting a little older. He can't defend as well. So I feel like that team with Dwight Howard, they're going to go win themselves the championship this year. They're going to go take like take out the Thunder, the mismatch down low. I feel like Howard will really be able, unless Perkins steps his game up, from what I saw in the playoffs, I really feel like Howard will be able to dominate down low. Nash in the offense, the pick and roll, their defense, three-time defensive player of the year, Howard will be able to slow the Thunder down, and it'll be a really good game. But I feel like Lakers could win in six or seven. And then, so my finals, I guess, would be Lakers versus Heat. And... I don't want to spend too long, so I'm just going to say the Lakers obviously have the mismatches at center with Howard over Bosch. And, I mean, LeBron, he can drive in, but how much can he possibly drive in against someone like Howard? And Nash will just completely outplay Mario Chalmers. So you got to look at the fact that the Lakers have more of a solid team and the Heat are more about driving in, posting up, double teams on LeBron Wade, and kicking out to the three-point shooters. They're going to live and die by the three this season, and I really feel like they're going to die this year in the championship and Lakers are going to win one for Kobe. So that was right. it. So, so Blackjack thinks that the Lakers are going to win their 17th championship this year. I believe the, the Celtics will win their 18th this year. Um, we're looking forward to this, this NBA season, and I hope you enjoyed this video.